And hello YouTube, this is JS Man Smart, and I'm today on a brand new video for tutorials with JS. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at a GIMP and all about patterns, how to use patterns, how to create your own patterns, even your own custom patterns, or if you want to use a pattern from the internet and import it into your GIMP program, you can very easily do so. So if you don't know what patterns are, or you've never seen them before, they're usually at the bottom right here. If you don't see them here, you might want to go up to Windows here, go to uh, Dockable Dialogs here, and find the Patterns option, which is right here, and the Patterns option should pop up here. Now what you'll see here, these are basically like textures, sort of. You can grab a pattern, and you can basically put it on top of here, and you can add this to anything, really. You can add this to a background, you can even add this to, say for example, an image. I have the stop sign here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it and paste it onto here, make it a new layer, and I'm gonna go ahead and right click it, alpha to selection, and I can go ahead and drag a texture on top of that even. Look at that, you could do something like that, or if you are making some type of border with lines or like a box around here, I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick box around the stop sign, like so. You can even add a border around your lines here, for example, like so, that looks pretty cool. Or you can even add this to text, for example. So we type in hello here, and we scale this up to say 100 real quick. And let me just change the font to something a bit more bulkier. So with text, the same thing, we can regulate our text, alpha selection, and we can grab a texture or a pattern here put it on top and as you can see you could do all kinds of things with patterns if you wanted to but what happens if you want to create your own pattern which is also very easy to do now we do have a brick pattern here but what if you don't like this brick pattern what if you want a different brick pattern and you don't find another one here well you can very easily create your own patterns and add them to GIMP by yourself you go ahead and go to Google images right here and if you want to type in bricks we have several different bricks here say I want to use uh, let's see, see I want to use these bricks right here because these look kind of cool. I can go ahead and view the full image. I can right click and I can copy image. I can go head back to GIMP. I can go up to file. You want to go to create from clipboard. And as you can see here we have the image. Then what you want to do is go and grab your crop tool which is right here. Make sure you have the aspect ratio set to fixed here. And then make sure your aspect ratio is set to one to one. I'm gonna type one to one, like so. And this will, make, this will basically make a perfect box. Go ahead and try to find a texture that looks good, uh, a, little, a little section that looks good for you. I think this section right here looks pretty good to me, like so. Then we're gonna go ahead and press enter to crop that. Then we're gonna go up to filters. We're gonna go to enhance, which is right here. Unsharp mask. I'm gonna go and press OK. And just in case you want to see what that did, here is before, here is after. It just made it a bit more sharper here. Made it a bit more detailed. Was exactly what you want. You can change some of the settings in the in the uh, option here. Enhance unsharp mask. You can change some of the settings if you'd like. But I, I found keeping them at default is just fine. After that, we're gonna go to filters once more. Head down to map, and then head to make seamless. And you'll see that for some for some textures it may look good. For this one, it doesn't look too good. As you can see, we have some opacity stuff going on here that makes it look kind of weird. Uh, for certain textures, you do want to do filters, map, make seamless. But for this texture, I think I'm not going to go ahead and do that. But just in case you do have another image, always try to do make seamless. If it looks good, then keep it. If it doesn't, then just keep your square that you have here. After that, we're going to go up to File. Make sure you go to Export. Don't go to Save As. Make sure you go to Export. From export, you want to go to your C drive here, go to users, find your username, and then you want to find your GIMP 2.8 folder or whatever version of GIMP you're running. If you don't find your GIMP 2.8 folder in the same place that I found it, it may be in a different directory. You may want to search your computer wherever you have it installed in. But here's mine, the GIMP 2.8 folder. Double click it, find the patterns folder, which is down here. And then make sure you name your file, whatever you want to name it. So we're going to name ours Cool Bricks, like so. Make sure you add the extension .pat after. Press enter. You can then uh, name your pattern here. And we're just going to name it Cool Bricks for a description again. Export it. 
and that will basically save. And then over here in your pattern section, go ahead and close this pattern. It should be ready to go now. We can close this as well. Then over here in your patterns, you want to click refresh down here at the bottom. Then after you've pressed refresh here, your cool brick should be in your patterns section here. And then guess what? We can add that and look at that. That looks pretty cool. And we can also add this on top of all of our other images as well, like so, as you can see. Obviously, uh, if you see that it's really big like this, you want to make a smaller square. Uh, because if you, if you make too big, when you're, when you're cropping, try to use a smaller crop. Otherwise, you'll get uh, really big tech, really big patterns like that. The smaller your square is, or generally, the smaller your pattern dimensions are, the more variety in repetitive patterns you'll get here. Otherwise, it'll be really big with this. I made the mistake of cropping the uh, pattern box that I made with the aspect ratio 1 to 1. I cropped it too big. So you wanna make sure your, your box is a bit smaller. In fact, the smaller it is, the better, mainly because you'll have more variability when you actually put the pattern on something. Because if your pattern is really big and you have something really small, it's going to zoom in like it did on that stop sign. So just be aware about that. But hopefully you understand what the process is. Hopefully you understand how to create your own patterns, how to use patterns now. And if you've never known about patterns in GIMP, hopefully this has been very informative for you. If you like the video, go ahead and leave a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go and subscribe. Lots of other tutorials, lots of other software tutorials on GIMP, Audacity, Photoshop, lots of cool stuff on design, video editing. So if you're into software and editing and stuff like that, go and subscribe to the channel. Lots of tutorials to come in the future as well, already on the channel right now. I also have a Patreon page. If you want to donate $8 to my Patreon, you can do so. Anything as low as that is very helpful, very much appreciated. All you got to do is click the card in the top right hand corner of the screen, and I'll bring you to the page. Any questions or comments you have, leave them in the comment box down below. I'll definitely down there answering any questions you have. And I also have a vlogging channel, music channel, advice channel, and a gaming channel. If you want to check those out? Links in the description as well as on the end card. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching as always. And this is GSM Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere. Thank you.